All right, so here we are with our 5.2 notes for Algebra 2. Uh, we are reviewing factoring. So the first thing we're going to review is factoring with an A value of 1. Remember that this is because we're talking about um, polynomials, in fact trinomials, of power of 2. So AX squared plus BX plus C. And so because of that, that's where this A is coming from. So the leading coefficient is 1. Alright, so if we take a look at this, the idea is asking yourself what is going to multiply to be negative 18 and at the same time add to be negative 3. So what you need to do is identify your factors of negative 18. And so you go through and find the list of all the factors that would multiply to be negative 18, those factor pairs. So, for instance, uh, negative 1 and 18 would work. We also have its opposite of 1 and negative 18. And then you just go along, so you say, okay, well then 2. So 2 and positive 9, or positive 2 and negative 9. Uh, then 3 comes in as well, so 3 and 6, and 3 and negative 6. Uh, 4 does not work, 5, and then going back to 6. So we have all of our pairs here, and now we're trying to find which ones add to be negative 3. So if we add these two together, nope, that's not going to work, no. Uh, those make 7, those make negative 7, and remember we're trying to make negative 3, so that's going to be this pair that adds to be negative 3. So that means that those are the pieces that will go into our factors. So we're going to have an x plus or minus a number and then another x plus or minus a number. And those numbers are going to be a 3 and a negative 6. So we have x plus 3 and x minus 6 and that is our factor set that would potentially expand to be x squared minus 3x minus 18. So we fill in our little piece here, x plus 3, x minus 6. Um, you could also have x minus 6, x plus 3. It's fine if it's backwards or forwards. It um, doesn't matter which one's first. All right. So then our other examples here are that a is not equal to 1. So now when we do this, there are actually a few strategies that you can use uh, to figure those out. First one I'm going to do um, is this one over here, and what you need to do is find out not what multiplies like the last one to be this last digit, but actually what multiplies to be the, multi the product of both of those numbers. So we want it to multiply to be 6 times negative 5, or negative 30. So I'm going to find all the factors of negative 30, and then from there, factor out. So, factors of negative 30, and the idea is I want to find a pair that is going to add to be positive 13. So, listing out all of our pairs here, we've got negative 1 and 30, and 1 and negative 30. I always start with 1. Then we can do 2, so 2 and 15, or positive 2 and negative 15. 3 definitely goes into 30, so negative 3 and 10, and 3 and negative 10. Uh, 4 doesn't go, but 5 does, so we have negative 5 and positive 6, and positive 5 and negative 6. So now we're looking for which ones add to be positive 13. Uh, positive 13, oh, okay, so that's going to be in here, and so this one adds to be positive 13. Uh, you might think these ones, but that's actually negative 7 and positive 7, so that's not going to work. So uh, that one there adds to be positive 13. And so now there are two strategies. You can either do kind of a factor by grouping, kind of rewriting it, um, or you can do the box. So the idea with the box here is that you get to fill in all the pieces. So if we fill in what we are given at the beginning, which is 6x squared, and then negative 5, we're also given a 13x, so it kind of goes diagonally there. 
but then the new pieces that we know are that one of them has to be a negative 2x, because um, it is the middle term, so we add an x on, and then 15x. So, all you need to do now is find the rows and the columns and their GCFs. So, we need to find GCF of rows and columns. So if we find uh, the GCF of this first column, for instance, uh, definitely going to have a 2 and an X in both of those. Uh, in the next column, we have a 5 that can go into both. Uh, in the next row here, we've got a 6 and a 15, so there's a 3 that's in both of those, and then an X. And then the next row is going to be a negative 1, because 2 and 5 are both prime. So, just double checking that this actually works. 2x times 3x is in fact 6x squared. 5 times 3x is 15. 2x times negative 1, yep. And 5 times negative 1 is that number as well. So that means that our factors are these two pieces on the outside. So 2x plus 5 from the outside piece there, and 3x minus 1 from the outside piece on the left. So of course factoring with something uh, other than a leading coefficient of 1, um, of course, is going to be a little bit more complicated, but totally doable. All right, uh, the last piece kind of goes through this idea that you could have a uh, greatest common factor in all of these, um, or the fact that you can have a special circumstance, and this one is actually called a difference of squares. Now, you can actually do exactly what we did here, just realizing that your middle term would be zero x's, and so you can find all of the factors that multiply to be negative 9 that add to be 0, and you can do this whole box again, okay? Uh, it will totally work out, or you can f identify that it's a difference of squares, which means that if you have uh, something squared minus another thing squared, that's going to equal, let's see, a minus b times a plus b. So that's our formula, and so we just have to identify what a and b are. So a, of course, is going to be this piece, but squared. So I need to find those pieces squared, meaning I need to square root it. So if I square root, I actually come up with a 4 and an x. I also need to square root the other piece as well, so square root of 9 is what I'm looking for. And so that's going to be 3, and of course that piece is squared. And so now I know that my a value is 4x, and my b value is 3. And so I can put those pieces into the formula over here. So that means that I'm going to have, again, a minus b and a plus b. So my a is 4x, and over here it's 4x, but then I'm going to have minus 3, and then plus 3. Anytime that you want to check that your solution works, you can always expand using FOIL or going back to the box method of putting them on the outside and then expanding them in the middle here. And so that's the idea for our notes. So again, these are factoring review, and so you're going to have some in your assignment that have a leading coefficient of just 1, a leading coefficient that's not 1, and then also some extra factors like difference of squares or ones that just have maybe a common number in all of them. So that is that.